Yes and no. Yes and no. So go on, explain your yes and no. So basically, he is able, as he said, he puts the sins of the... Bob is debating with the black Hebrew Israelite. The Hebrew Israelite. Yes. Yes. So he is able to do that. However, it does say in Ezekiel, it does say in many, and even in Deuteronomy as well, that no man can die for the sin. So he can so he can punish the child. Yeah. He can punish the child, but he won't kill the child. Right. The the yeah. Okay, so let me reply to that. Because when Christ said no man sure, 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 first let's have you got the reference? Um, it's in the Old Testament. Yeah, it's in the Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it 18? Is, is it yeah. 18? Uh, 22, 22. Yeah, yeah, but it's in Deuteronomy as well. Yes. Yeah, Deuteronomy. So now yeah. let me address that. Yeah. Because when it says that no man can die for the sins of another, yeah. okay, which incidentally already puts it above all of the surrounding religion in terms of their human sacrifices. The kind of man that it is talking about yeah. is not the kind of man that Jesus was. As a, I mean, you're saying you follow the Bible. Do you believe... The Old Testament. You, so you reject the New Testament. I just yes. wanted to put it. So as a Christian, I believe in the New Testament. Yes. And I believe that Jesus Christ was not merely a man. He was a man. He was a man, yeah. but he was also divine. Yes. And the reason why that humanity yeah. could die for the sins of the world yeah. is because that humanity yeah. has the value of the divinity that it is united to in Christ. No man, no mere man can die for the sins of another. Why? Because your life is equal in value to my life. But imagine a humanity that was united to the very divinity of God. That humanity would be worth all of our lives. Agreed? Right. This, so, this is the so debate. The this is the debate. That's why Jesus Christ I challenge him to debate with me sins. on these topics. So look at him. So he was so divine. He was divine. Because he was divine. Yes. His humanity was now equal in value to all of our lives. Every human being that ever lived. But that's not in the Bible. The fall, ignore him. If you talk to him, you stop talking to me. I do not talk to him. So you talk to him, I stop talking to you. He's scared, man. I'm, I'm helping the man. Ignore him. I'm helping the brother out there. Look at him. The guy is scared of me. We say that the life of Christ is worth the life of every human being that ever existed. Ever. And ever will exist. His value then, the value of this humanity, is even greater than all of the humans combined. And all angels. <laughs> and all other principalities, powers, this and authorities of creation itself. His value, the value of his humanity is greater than all of them because it is united to his divinity. Okay, so because he is so divine, because he is so divine, yeah, his humanity is now better than everyone else of greater value, of a greater value, yes. And then through that, he is able to uh, bear the sins of everyone who has ever existed and is ever going to exist yes. and die for their sins. Is that what you say? Yes, and let, let me just come back to a point from the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, if you believe in what the Old Testament says, you accept. Now, would you you accept that a sheep yeah. is not of equal value to a human? Agreed. A sheep is not of equal value to a human. Would you agree with that? No, I do not. Right. So you believe? I, wait, wait, wait. You believe that the Old Testament teaches that the value, the, the value of the life of the sheep is equal to the value of the life of the sheep? Well, technically, under the laws, it implies that because you can't murder. So if I murder the lamb and I didn't, and I didn't, and I killed it because I felt like it, under. Under the laws, I would have to be purged out of the bloodline of Israel. I have to be stoned. 
Can you show me where it says you should be stoned for killing a sheep? Stoned for killing a for murder? Yes. Do you know what murder is? Yeah, of course. But we're not. We're, talk, we're talking that's about murder. No, it doesn't matter if it's an animal, if bro. it's an insect. Bro. Yeah. Bro. If it's ma murder, it's murder. It's, it's, it's crime. It's crime. Yeah, you're right. It's crime. No, that's not what it. That's not what it says. Yes, it does. Thou shalt not murder. Yes. It doesn't even say thou shalt not kill. Bro. Bro. Even, yeah. bro. Bro. Shall we have a conversation or just shouting? I'm not shouting. I'm trying to get my point. So, I've got, I've let him talk. He's not talking. Point, see, see his strategy. He's using his nasty strategies on the problem. Now look. The, want to dominate the, the conversation. Christ, thou shalt not murder to anyone. Yes. Right, but that's not what the Old Testament is. Yes, it does. Let me finish. Because the Old Testament commands the Levitical priesthood to kill bulls, rams, and pigeons. There's a difference between killing and murder. Right. Show me in Scripture where it says you should stone someone for killing a sheep. No one says No one says it. You're, you're not getting the point. Go on, make your point again. It doesn't specifically say you will be uh, stoned for killing a sheep. Right? But it specifically says if you murder, if you kill for your own selfish reasons, you shall be stoned. Is that your point? That's my point. Can I reply? Yes, right. So the Decalogue that we find in Exodus 20, yeah, right, is talking about human to human relationships and human to God relationships. The first four commandments are about man's relationship to God, and the remaining six are about man's relationship to man inside the covenant. When it says thou shalt not murder, there is no one in the world, apart from you, that would try to argue that this applies to cattle. Everyone who knows, everyone who knows the Decalogue, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. If you murder cattle that is not your own, there would be a punishment. But it would be the punishment of, like, stealing. Yeah. So it would be a lesser punishment than murdering the human being. That's what the Old Testament law teaches. So it does not value the life of cattle as equal to the life of a human being. So that means when it's saying thou shalt not murder in the context of human to human relationship, it's giving a certain intrinsic value to human life, not to animal life. Murdering animal life that isn't your own would fall into stealing laws. Which Even means if it's a wild animal. Which means that no, they've got no problem with hunting in the Old Testament. Yeah, hunting for food. If I kill the if I kill the animal because I just didn't like how it looks. Bro, this is just bro. I well, what, what would be the punishment for that? I just want to. I'm not sure if the, the. Well, one second. You haven't even heard what I said. You just said I don't. I'm not sure. You don't know what I was going to say. Well, you just said I'm not sure. So that wasn't the end of the sentence. But that gives me the implication that you're not sure. Because you jumped to a conclusion before I finished the sentence. How can I jump to a conclusion? If you've given. Thank you. Exactly. A strict statement. I'm not sure. Because exactly. I finish the sentence. Okay. Finish. There you go. So. I am not sure if the Old Testament gives a punishment to cattle. That isn't the same. That isn't saying that I agree that there is some kind of punishment for killing cattle or killing wild animals. When in doubt, go back to the law. And the law specifically states, thou shalt not murder. But does, no, that's not applying to animals. Does it say it doesn't apply to animals? Yes. Well, yes. Because when you look at the punishments that are connected to infringing the thou shalt not murder law, it's talking about human beings. Every example of the application of the thou shalt not murder rule yeah. involves humans. Okay. Well, you show me one that doesn't. I can't show you one because it doesn't. There isn't one there. Well, if it's not there, it doesn't mean that it wasn't an act of rule. No, so you've got evidence that. Huh? Evidence that. No, some, some, the Bible doesn't give all examples. Like said, of this. But these are your own private interpretations, bro. No, private interpretation. Yeah, they're, they're, they're my interpretations, and it's private. valid because it clearly says, yeah. Thou shalt not murder. Bro, you need to That's study it. more. You really need to study more. For him, so you yourself, the, the you as well. The New Testament counsels <laughs> counselors not to use private interpretation of the scriptures. It says no prophecy was given by man 
every prophecy was given by the Spirit of God, and that we should not use personal, private interpretation. But you use it all, you use it all the time. The, the, it could be private. The, the, one, second, one, one second. Yeah, but that's the problem. Well, when they say that you believe in Trinity, you did the same thing. It's a problem because has to read you are trying to read the scriptures in isolation to how the Judeo-Christian faith <laughs> has interpreted those scriptures. And that's why you've gone wayward in your understanding of those scriptures. Okay. Show me a Jew that agrees with your interpretation of the Old Testament. Well, all them Jews, no. those uh, so-called Jews. So you're Hebrewist, bro. Show me a Jew. Show me a Jew who believes in Trinity. I can't. I can't say that I'm Hebrew because the language is lost. Bro, the Israelite bro. movement and the Hebrew Israelite movement is simply a cultural reaction to the pain of slavery. <laughs> it's rooted in the made-up fictitious fantasies of its founders that can't be traced any further back than a hundred years. They're all connected to a guy called Mark, uh, Martin Garvey, I think his name is, or Mark Garvey, or Matthew Garvey, right? Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. I know he wasn't, but his ideas is what gave birth to a whole bunch of different religions, including the nation of Islam and the Hebrew Israelites. They were influenced by Marcus Garvey. <laughs> All right. Now, can I give you evidence? No, no, no. The one saying, though, no, bro, it's going to dominate the conversation. You've got to talk as it's well. Not, it's not the religion of Israel. God made man, the man church made has the religion of Israel. God made man, man made religion. The, if you go to the etymological dictionary and you find what church means, church comes from Circe, which is Greek. What does church mean? Church, um, by the way, that's wrong. Yes, it, no, it's not. No, it comes from the Greek Ecclesia. No, it comes from Circe. Go and Google it right now. Yeah. I've got, I've got, I've already checked some. Google I've it already, right now. Shall we I've Google already, it right in front of you? I've, unfortunately, I don't have the book. In front let, of let me Google it. For okay. You. Google it. Okay, see, this guy trusts Google. See this guy here? Well, well, that's, that's the no, Sokoma is there. You see? Go, so go come the I came here, Bob is running away from me like queen. a chicken half a wind. You know? Yeah. Huh? He distracted me, called another man for me to debate with. I debunked the man. But look at Bob. He's coming here picking all the brothers who don't, don't know about his strategy. They, they don't know about his technique, his strategy. Yeah, but no, 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 no. We, we, I know Bob's strategy. Eh? People who don't know about his strategy, no, you know it be fair. If I said if I said to Bob, let's let's debate. All this, no, he wouldn't debate with me because he knows. But you know, tell the truth. You know, the Bob is really, you, know, you are laughing. You know, <laughs> Bob will never debate with me because those I'll use the Bible against him. But he lost the prophets. Brothers are not well versed in the scripture and he'll start his crap trap, his bunkum, and his right, nonsense on them. Look at him. Here it is. Bro, look. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is, if you're an Israelite, I want to encourage you to elevate yourself above this kind of nonsense. Because this kind of nonsense is oh, sorry, holding sorry. black. Let me finish. No, 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 no. Let me finish. My bad. It's Anglo-Saxon. The word church comes from the Greek word ecclesia, which is exactly what I said to you. So that's fine. And I, and right? I corrected myself. Yes. And I said, right. right? From the Anglo-Saxon. No. Anglo-Saxon word. No. It's called circuit. See, the, the, the debate is uh, they're digressing. They were talking about Jesus coming to die. On the cross for mankind. The word yeah, that's uh, means gathered. Salvation is in Christ. Now that that, that, that digress and diverting, I would have stayed the on that church, topic yeah, and exposed this Bob. But he's, he's very clever, clever devil. He got the strategy. You see, holds the faith of Israel fulfilled. If you want, if you want, if you want the faith of Israel, you need to become a Christian. All right. The kind of ignorance amongst the Israelites and the Hebrew Israelites and all of that group of people yeah. is holding the black community back. I'm not black. You are celebrating oh, black. ignorance. Black means, you know what black means? Black means <laughs> Dangerous. That's what it means. Yeah. Black is a color of law. Everything is governed by law. 
Bro, you're not an issue, right? Huh? You're not an issue. Okay, so I'll, I'll bring you to this. Kumasi and Magdala. Go check that in, in the British line, right? Kumasi and Magdala. Two British characters and Africans. That has an illustration from the author who is uh, more to Stanley, sorry, uh, British colonialist, yeah. He's got, an, he's got a drawing of all the Vanian uh, uh, chiefs while they were um, while they were, you know, travelling around the area, right? You want to debate with me? That illustration is the only illustration ever in time which shows the 